Hello fellow artists, this is Linda Riddle and it's a good time for art. In our past eight classes, we've been learning more and more how to think like an artist. And when I say we've been learning, I include myself in that group because every time I teach you something, I learn so much more about the thing that I'm teaching you. So thank you for that opportunity. Some of the things we've been talking about are being resourceful with the kinds of materials that we use. We've been gaining confidence in our hands by creating works of art from collage to contour drawing. And we've been learning to look carefully at nature. Today, we're going to focus on one of the most important tools we have as artists, our imaginations. Using our imaginations, we can create worlds of our own invention. Today, we'll be creating magical landscapes from our imaginations. And I would like to introduce you to a wonderful artist from the past who did exactly that. The French artist Henri Rousseau was not appreciated during his lifetime. Today, he is greatly admired for his richly colored, meticulously detailed jungle scenes. He loved art as a child, but his family could not afford to send him to art school. Although he had always wanted to be an artist, he had to support himself and his family by working as a tax collector in a government office. But through the years, he continued to teach himself art by copying paintings in museums. When he began to exhibit his own art, he was ridiculed by the critics for his childlike style. One surprising fact about Rousseau is that he never actually saw a real jungle. In fact, he never left France during his lifetime. His paintings were inspired by children's books and visits to the zoo and the botanical gardens in Paris. In this painting, you can see Rousseau's careful attention to detail. The longer you look, the more exotic plants and animals you can see. This scene of a tropical storm captures the surprise on the face of a tiger as lightning flashes and thunder rumbles through the jungle. Rousseau used multiple shades of green to create a lush tropical atmosphere. Notice how the plants grow off every side of the canvas, making us feel almost surrounded, like we are actually in the jungle ourselves. Because Rousseau had spent so much time observing exotic plants and animals in books and gardens, he was able to create his own magical jungles using his imagination. This tropical scene even looks a bit like a garden, with flowers lined up in rows. In this close-up of one of his paintings, we can see how Rousseau used highlights on the plants to show them reflecting the moonlight. It's always fun to search his paintings for wild animals peeking out from the foliage. When you do your imaginary landscape, of course you can use any materials that you have at home. I'm just going to do a little demonstration um, using some oil pastels, and um, maybe a marker, and just give you a few little tips. Um, obviously, everyone's landscape is going to be completely unique, and you might decide to do a jungle, you might decide to do some sort of amazing garden. I know a little girl named Fiona who's probably going to do a unicorn garden you might want to do a garden in outer space with some sort of little aliens running around and 
strange space age plants. Whatever you decide is fantastic. But I do want to give you a couple of tips about composition, making sure that your landscape, whichever kind you choose to draw, is really has a full impact that you want it to have. And the first hint I'm going to give you is something that we already saw um, Andre Rousseau do in his paintings, and that is to go off every edge of the paper with your drawing. So it's not like a little teeny contained thing in the middle here, but it's you'll have plants that are reaching off the top, reaching out the sides, reaching down the bottom, and it will make your composition so much more interesting. I One tip that I have um, when you're doing your initial drawing that I've done a lot of times with kids in my classes is instead of just starting with a marker or oil pastel, one thing you can do to ease yourself in is to use a, a piece of white chalk, just regular, I guess, chalk like people use on a chalkboard. And if you have colored paper and white chalk, you can do your drawing. And if you, if something happens that you're not too happy with, you just smudge it out a little bit. But it's a great way to just get your general idea down on the paper. So. I think I'm going to do a jungle. I think I'm going to put an elephant in the jungle because I have a sister who loves elephants. So maybe I'll start with my elephant who will just be walking through the jungle. And I'm going to go ahead and start drawing him with my chalk. If you have a particular kind of animal in mind and you're not quite sure how to draw it, of course you can always look in a book or look online and just you know check out the general shapes and so forth so that you'll feel a little more comfortable. But since this is an imaginary landscape, of course you could make up your own animals and there's really no way to make a mistake. So I've got myself an ele elephant there, and I want to have plants that are in front of part of him, in back of him. Maybe he's just going to be peeking out from behind some plants. So I think I'm going to start making some really big, tall, curly grasses in front of him. And if I decide I don't like some of these later, that's fine. I can get rid of them. I think I'm going to make a big tree over here. And I'm going to have that tree growing right off the top of the paper. And right off the side of the paper. I think I'll have a few roots growing down here, and maybe a palm tree on this side. I think I'll have some pointy grasses coming out from this corner. And how about some vines growing? up in this tree. Maybe I'll have a vine coming down here and maybe coming around the other side. I'll put some roundish kind of leaves on my vine. If you're wondering why I'm using a piece of chalk instead of, say, a pencil, there's a very good reason for that. I'm going to be using oil pastels, which do not make a really skinny point. They make kind of have kind of a fat point. 
And if I'm going to be coloring something with oil pastels, I don't want to have skinny little tiny things that will be hard for me to color in. So if I'm drawing with something, if I'm coloring in with something fat, I'm going to be drawing with something fat. Chalk is also really great if you're going to be using a paintbrush and paint because it will prevent you from making things that are too tiny for you to paint in and, and will keep you from getting frustrated later on. Okay, I have, I think, kind of a general idea. I can always add more stuff as I go along. But what I'm going to do now, which is just one of many options, but what I'd like to do on this one is make black lines instead of white lines so that when I color in, it'll really show up well. Sometimes if I try, try to draw directly on the chalk, it, it might not work great, but um, sometimes I draw kind of a little to the side of it, but you can sort of go on top of it too. Now at this part is when I make some decisions, like what's going to overlap what. So I'm going to let this flower stem overlap some of these grasses here. All these white lines are going to eventually kind of get covered up and smudge away. So I'm just going to keep going until I have all all of these um, white lines turned into black lines. I actually have one that's a little further along that I was working on, so I'll just switch papers and show you that I've put all my black lines in here and, and I'm starting to put some color in here. Now I want to point out to you why it's so important to really fill your page up. We want to feel like we're in the midst of this landscape, that it's almost surrounding us. And I think that's one thing that Henri Rousseau did so beautifully is that the landscape was so dense and coming from every direction that you really felt that you were part of it. So what I did to help you understand why that's important is I did a drawing of the very same thing. My little elephant and my trees and my grasses and flowers, but I just kind of plop them in the middle of the paper. And I think you can see that this is not nearly as effective in making the viewer feel like they're part of the whole scene. Whereas when you look at this one, you really feel like you're part of the action, which is something that makes art so much more fun to look at. So I'm just going to take this and start putting color wherever I want to put it. I can, there are no rules in terms of what colors I make things. Grasses can be blue or green or purple or orange. Tree trunks can be whatever color you want them to be. This is an imaginary, magical place that you're making up yourself. So don't feel constrained to simply make all the leaves green or all the tree trunks brown or any of those kinds of things. So let me just do a little work on this one. Any chalk lines will just be easily covered up by the oil pastel. Most oil pastels are opaque enough that you can use them on colored paper like this and you'll still be able to cover up the color of the paper. Whereas if you were to use crayons or something, you would really need to have a light colored background.
Before I talk to you about my imaginary landscapes, I want to emphasize that I hope with all my heart that your drawings end up looking completely different than mine. I'm using these examples to show you a few different options for exploring your own ideas. These are definitely not meant as models for you to try to copy. Your landscape will be completely unique because you will be using your own wonderful imagination. This is the jungle scene I was working on in the demonstration. I worked on this for a long time. I wanted to make layers and layers of foliage like Henri Rousseau did in his jungle. I used oil pastels and sometimes layered one color over another. One thing I was trying to achieve was the feeling of a moonlit night. So I added lighter highlights at the top of plants and on top of the elephant. This is pretty much the same drawing, but I used a combination of temper paint and colored chalk. I wanted this elephant to blend a bit into the landscape. So I made him a similar color to the colors around him. This is an idea I got from my own backyard. We have a sassy little family of scrub jays who come to our back door several times a day demanding peanuts. I tried to be fairly accurate drawing the bird, but I used my imagination for the plants. I had lots of fun with the moon and used dotted lines to suggest the shimmer of moonbeams. This is a landscape I've just started. It occurred to me that a kitten in a garden might feel like she is a tiger in a jungle. This is an imaginary jungle I did with markers. Somehow, water spilled on my finished drawing and caused some of the colors to run. At first I was upset, but then I noticed how beautifully the colors had blended. So I'm going to leave it exactly the way it is. Finally, this is an imaginary outer space landscape I made with a Sharpie, oil pastels, and watercolor. This was so much fun. When I drew this, I thought about the lesson we did recently about exploring line, and I tried to use all kinds of lines to make my imaginary plants and little space alien. I love moons, so I made three of them. One thing I'm learning is that using your imagination makes it stronger. The more you use it, the more ideas you will have. I know you'll have some amazing ideas for your imaginary landscapes. I'd love to see them. Share them with all of us at hashtag GoodTimeForArt. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all for today, but remember, it's always a good time for art.